Hey there, everyone. It's episode 75 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's episode, tackling the subject of avoiding fights. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some excellent apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you that are listening again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more about them at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are on a different site, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're over there, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. Now, today's subject, as I mentioned, is about avoiding fights. In the martial arts, we spend a lot of time, the majority of our time, training how to win a fight. But, as some would say, the only way to truly win a fight is to avoid it altogether. One of the things that I'm most proud of in my martial arts career is how successful I've been at avoiding confrontations altogether. Now, when I say confrontations, I don't mean that I've avoided people confronting me, but I've managed to find a way out of those situations to avoid the engagement that other people were seeking. And... My strategies for this go quite a ways back. And to be honest, most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today is stuff that I developed on my own. I don't talk about myself too much on this show, and that's intentional, especially when we have a guest on. You know, it's not about me, it's about the guest. And when we do these topic shows for Thursday, it's really about the subject. But I think there's some value in understanding a little bit about who I am when it comes to these strategies. I'm smaller. Some of you have met me. I'm five foot six. Um, I'm I've got a little bit of muscle on me now, but back when I was in high school, I was a small guy. You know, weighed 120, 125 pounds. I was the stereotypical nerd, glasses, honors classes, uh, small frame. You know, and I was the kid that should have been picked on all the time, and I was. And when I say should have, I don't mean it was right. I mean, it just, it was cliche. I was the kid they got picked on a lot of the time. And as I look back on that, I was really good at implementing some of these strategies that I'm going to go over now. And those have served me really well, even through adulthood. Uh, through my 20s, my best friend was someone who tended to get into a lot of fights. And whenever I was with him, he was fine because I, I was able to Uh, diffuse situations with some of these tactics I'm going to talk about now. So rather than give you too much context and go down that rabbit hole, let's just jump into it. So obviously the best way to avoid a fight is to avoid dangerous situations, dangerous locations. One of the best ways that I've ever heard it expressed is don't go to dumb places with dumb people and do dumb things. Quite often, certainly not always, but quite often, the situations that will end up in a physical confrontation are coming out of places with people that one might expect. Uh, Anywhere that alcohol exists, bars, uh, concerts, things like that, those are prime places because people's energy is up. A lot of times people are posturing sexually they're they're you know looking for a partner or, or you know somebody to to uh, have a romantic relationship with and you couple that with alcohol and that can quite often lead to situations uh, i'm not someone who frequents bars I, I will go out from time to time with friends but those of us that have been to bars know there are bars that are rougher than others you've got to pick your battles you know figuratively you've got to make a decision is going to this seedier bar because it has a band that I want to listen to or a friend that I want to meet? Is it worth that risk? And I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to the place. I'm saying that you should be aware. You should take calculated risk whenever you go anywhere. And if you do go somewhere that is risky or not, it's about awareness. We did a whole show on awareness and how to build that skill of of being aware of what's going on around you. But if you go somewhere, be a little bit more cautious. Keep your back to the wall. Keep your eyes open to what's going on. 
if you're at a bar, don't get hammered. You know, just don't set yourself up for failure, really. Now, let's suppose that you've done all of those things or, you know, there, there's something that just can't be avoided. Someone has confronted you and hopefully your first strategy is not to physically take them out. Most of us have the skill to do that. Hopefully we all have the skill to do that or we're, we're working towards the skill to do that. But as I said, today's show, it's not about that. You've already got that covered. I don't need to teach you how to do that. So one of the best things you can do is to really just talk people down. If someone confronts me and they, you know, they're, they're carrying on, I looked at them funny, whatever it is, the first thing that I'm going to do is just try to diffuse the situation. Hey, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Take some humility. Really uh, knock yourself down a peg if you can. And just let them know, hey, you know, my bad. And quite often in these situations, people are looking for someone to rise up against them, to get defensive. So you totally take the wind out of their sails when they come at you like that. You know, it's the whole concept of yin yang. They come at you hard, you balance them out soft, right? Now let's say that doesn't work. They're in your face, they're angry, they're aggressive, and you've tried to talk them down and that doesn't work. Well, walk away. Say, you know what? Let me get out of here. You have a good night. And quite often that'll work too. It's not worth getting into a fight, whether or not you're going to win, to save a little bit of pride. Pride is, is such a foolish um, emotion, a foolish sense, in my opinion, because it makes people do really dumb things quite often. So you walk away. What if they follow you? Or what if they block your path? What if escape isn't an option? Humor is a great one. Maybe you're not a funny person, but let's suppose you are, or let's suppose that you, you know, a joke or worst case, you can make fun of yourself, you know, Hey, you know, uh, sorry about that. You could offer telling someone a joke as let's say retribution. Hey, you know what? You're right. I was a jerk. I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you. Let me see if I can make you laugh. I think everybody just in general in life should have a joke or two at the ready, something quick, you know, a knock, knock joke or whatever that you can whip out at a moment's notice, a uh, great icebreaker. And maybe you try throwing that out there, or maybe you're a little bit better off the cuff uh, with your sense of humor. I tend to be in situations, not so much when I'm recording a podcast, I could tell you a knock, knock joke, but you know, we're, we're going to save that. Maybe I'll, I'll save it for a really desperate time on the show, right? Now, humility, being self-deprecating, cutting yourself down, I think is probably one of the best strategies. For you, you may reorder this list. I'm running down in a list that I tend to go through in my head, uh, first resort to last. So we're about halfway down the list, and I am completely willing to make myself look terrible to avoid a fight. You may not be willing to, and that's okay. So if someone's in my face, they won't let me leave. I've tried to talk myself out of it. I've tried to be funny and lighten the situation. None of that has worked. I'll just be honest. And this works because I'm a small guy. You know, where's the challenge? Look at me. I'm tiny. I'm a nerdy guy. What does it prove for you to beat me up? You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Just let me get out of here. You know, it's, it's going to make you look bad to beat me up. I mean, really. And something like that, you know, it's not always going to work. But again, it might. We're working through this list. Now, once we get past that point, if I realize that, hey, this guy, this person, this group of people aren't letting me out of it, my mindset starts to shift. And I start to very slowly turn on that same fight reflex, you know, we fight or flight, right? So everything up until now has been flight. It's been very defensive, very um, almost submissive in a sense. But now we're starting to make that shift. And this next one, be crazy. Nobody wants to mess with a crazy person because there are no rules. 
We've all heard examples. Some of us maybe have seen or unfortunately been in an altercation with someone who others might say doesn't play by the rules. Um, you know, quite often when men fight, there's this unspoken rule of, you know, not kicking in the groin. I, I've heard people say, you know, oh, well, it wasn't fair. He kicked him in the groin. There are no rules in a fight, right? And to go even beyond that, to portray yourself in a way that you aren't going to respect any rules. Maybe you develop a nervous tick. Maybe you start to shout. To do something that appears outside of the norm of what someone would expect someone to do in a situation where they know they're going to get into a fight. If you can escalate your self in that way, if you can start to bring up your own energy and projecting it out there through the appearance of being nuts, that will often back people off because they don't know what to expect. When someone's coming after you, they're expecting a certain outcome. They're expecting they're going to win. Very, very rarely is someone going to pick a fight that they don't think they're going to win. They might not. We hope they don't. But let's let's work with that psychology for a second. If someone is pretty sure that they're going to win a fight with you, and now you start bending those rules, you start making them question what they believed beforehand, they're much more likely to back down. So practice your crazy face, do it in the mirror, come up with a, a your own persona that you can pull out. And I would argue that practicing this is just as valuable as practicing punches and blocks. In fact, this might come in more handy. Now, the last strategy, and when I present this material, this is the one that always catches some flack. You've gone through this whole list, you've been crazy, and that's not enough. Well, there's another level of crazy, and it's called being gross. Now, I'm not going to get too detailed here, but let's pretend that you pick your nose. And whether you end up with stuff on your fingers or you don't, you can act like you do. Um, if that's not enough, you can keep going. And I'm not going to keep going with examples, but I'm sure you could come up with some because that's a level of crazy that almost nobody's going to work with. Now, I'll be honest, I've never had to take it to that point. Just being crazy has been plenty for me, but you might have to go a little bit further. Now, the advantage, let's say you get through all that, you've been crazy, you've been gross, and that's that's not enough. This person, group, whatever, they're still coming. You've brought your heart rate up. You have, to a certain degree, started projecting an energy of confidence. Because, hey, if you're confident enough to pick your nose and show it to people, you're confident. You're confident enough that you're going to be ready for this altercation and you've just given yourself a better chance. So I'll run down through them one more time. Don't go to dumb places with dumb people and do dumb things. If you have to or choose to, make sure you are aware. If you do end up in a situation that you can't avoid with that first method, try disarming it. Try having a conversation with the person. Try talking them down. People are people, and sometimes mistakes happen. If that doesn't work, get out of there. Walk away. Don't be too proud to run. If that doesn't work, use some humor. Tell a joke, whatever you got to do there. Be willing to be self-deprecating. Cut yourself down. Make yourself less of a target. Make the reward for the altercation to the other party be less than they thought it was. If that doesn't work, you start to pump yourself up, get crazy, and if that's not enough, get gross. So that's my list, you might have your own, and if you do, I would love to hear about it. If we miss something for avoiding a fight, any strategies you might have, go ahead, shoot us a message on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Username's Whistlekick. Most of you guys know that by now. We love hearing from you. And if social media is not your thing, or if you want to do something a little more privately, you can email us, info at whistlekick.com, or 
head on over to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, fill out the contact form there. And don't forget, you can find all of our podcast episodes over on YouTube. Now, if you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, go ahead, shoot us a message, fill out the form on the website. And while you're over there, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay up on everything we're doing. You can learn more about our products at whistlecake.com. Well, that's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.